Agela san, sangeli, zoya ha yuchi ha muskogi. Good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Wildcat. I am a Yuchi member of the Muskogee Nation, the Creek Nation of Oklahoma, and I am so delighted to uh, welcome you to our celebration of indigenuity here at Mona at the Museum of Native American History. Um, you know, how you start things often has to do with how things end. And so, um, I'm no one special, uh, but when you're asked to help, uh, and particularly to offer some good words, a prayer, uh, to start an event like this, one, you're just incredibly humbled, as I am, and honored to do so. And so I, I just want to make this clear. Uh, I'm looking around to see if there might be some elders I could call on uh, in my place. But um, I am just honored to help get our program started today. So, uh, again, over 500 nations in the contiguous 48 states and Alaska, if you count our uh, Alaska Native brothers and sisters. Um, everyone has their own ways for doing this. So, you know, some people will use sage, some will use tobacco, some will use sweet grass. Uh, you know, uh, cedar. My people, originally from Georgia, uh, removed to eastern Oklahoma on one of many trails of tears. And we know there were many trails of tears in the United States of eastern tribes moved here. But uh, cedar is something we use because we always had those red cedar trees uh, where, we, where we were. And so um, I'm really fortunate because I was gifted upon my arrival, some red cedar. And so what I'm going to do is burn some red cedar and um, offer a blessing, a call on some good power, good energy to help us do things in a good way the next three days. So come on in, folks, and have a seat. We're just getting started here. And uh, so bear with me. I'm going to light some cedar and um, offer some words. Of, in our Yuchi language, we would talk about this power. Uh, Gahatane, Gahatane, creator, uh, father. Gahatane. So I'm going to uh, basically ask Gahatane to guide us through the next, next few days and keep us mindful of the incredible beauty that surrounds us in this world. That's something we forget too often. The beauty that surrounds us and the power each of you are a part of on this beautiful blue-green planet, this Mother Earth. So let me get this cedar lit and we'll, we'll proceed. The cameras are probably trying to follow me. So again, I was real lucky that, that I was gifted some cedar here to use for this upon my arrival. How appropriate. Things always, uh, you know, Vine, Deloria, my dear friend and member, uh, mentor and someone that many in this audience knew well, particularly Bobby, Bobby Bridger. And he always said, Daniel, there aren't any accidents. Things happen for a reason. And he always used to tell me that. I said, you know, I could never, 
imagine I'd be doing what I'm doing, Vine. And he said, he said, well, what you're doing is a fulfillment of prayers that were made generations before you ever got here, Daniel. And, um, yeah, I've thought about that a lot. Because that's, uh, that's really cool to, when you think about that. I wish I were completely fluent in my Zoyaha language. I'm not. But I can offer thanks. I can offer thanks. And that's what I will do. Offer thanks again for all of this beauty that surrounds us. We call this a smudge stick. You know, we can use it to send these good words into creation, the creation around us. And so that's what we're going to do today. What is that made out of? This is cedar. What, what? This here is cedar. Uh, wood Just the leaves and the, the stem, uh-huh, bound together. Start with the east. Fakafe, Gahatane. I say, thank you, Creator. San Le. San Le, Gayasada. Thank you so much for all of the beauty that surrounds us and all those relatives that go as far as I can see and way beyond all around this beautiful Mother Earth. And then I look to the south and I think of all of those relatives, the plants, the animals, the land, the air, the water, the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, all of this life that have been gifted to us, our own lives as gifts on this beautiful creation. I say, San Lei, San Lei. I look to the West and I honor all of those powers, those energies of the West. And I ask that blessings fall down upon us here, pour down upon us, work through us and in us so that we may do good work and be kind, intelligent, compassionate human beings. And then I look to the north, clear past the circumpolar Arctic and clear on the other side of the world. And of course, this is the beauty of the circles we honor in our traditions, right? Because if we keep going, we end up in the south and back where we came. In the east, if we kept going, we would end up to the west. So to those spirits, those powers of the north, first of all, I'm mindful of my relatives there, at Shizmerov and Nome, who are right now facing great trials with the remnants of this typhoon that is flooding their homes, their land. And so we think of them. And we think of all of our relatives. Past, present, future. And we're mindful of those seven generations into the future of our human relatives. And we return to the East with the following thoughts. The thought that we're not asking for any things. We're not asking for any material wealth creator because we know in our traditions, wealth is measured in terms of the number of good relatives you have in this world. 
if you have good relatives, you're never wanting for resources. And we're thankful for all of those relatives, those different than human relatives, the grass, the earth, the land, the air, the water, the life that surrounds us. And so our final ask is simply this, that we never forget the beauty that surrounds us even in this world full of very real ugliness. Our wise ones tell us both are real, but they tell us only one is true. And which path you choose to follow, the one in the shadow of darkness or the one in the light of beauty is up to you. Creator, we ask that you give us the wisdom to be kind, compassionate relatives to all of the life that surrounds us and that we never forget. We live in beauty, a home. So thank you for allowing me to get us started today. And so at this uh, time, I'd like to call uh, David uh, to the stage. And uh, we're going to get this uh, fantastic three-day event underway. Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody and welcome. Welcome to an event that is going to be so much fun. My name is David Bogle, and I'm the chairman of the Museum of Native American History. A little bit about our museum. We're an art museum. And so the pieces that you see when you go through there are some, some of the most wonderful pieces of Native art. But just as important, we're a history museum. And that's what we do. We teach Native history. We teach history that starts 18, 20,000 years ago I often get asked why I started Mona, why I started this museum. And, and in many ways, it's because of the word Indian. I'm native, but that word Indian, I don't mind the word. Uh, I've got no problems with it, but I want everybody just to take a second, close your eyes, and I'm going to say, and I want you to picture, whenever I say the word Indian, take a picture and open your eyes. Now, what happens to almost everybody, and we can't help it, but we, but we have that mental picture of this of this chief riding a spotted pony across the, uh, the plains of Nebraska, and he's got a big headdress, and the headdress is flowing, and the mane of the horse is flowing, and that's what, that's what TV and movies have done to us, culturally. Mona, the Museum of Native American History, I started to try to help dispel that minor little image that we've created of, of what a native is. We have somewhere around 550 uh, registered tribes. And so when you come through Mona, 
I want you to have broadened your horizons. I want you to understand more about what goes on from East Coast to West Coast, from North to South, within our Native community. I've been very blessed to meet two very special people. Uh, I want Jaslyn and Charlotte to come up on stage. Come in here. Sweaty. <laughs> These two young ladies, they're the reason that the weekend, the, uh, the three day event we're going to have. This is them. These two girls and Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte has now been with me for how many years? Going on nine. Going on nine number years. Number nine, number nine, number nine. <laughs> and she is the most creative person in the world. Everything that you're going to see over the next three days, it's these two young ladies that have put this on, have organized it, have, uh, have brought in the speakers, have designed the events, and I'm so proud of them. Uh, I hope you all are ready for a very special next few days, and uh, please give a round of applause for these two young ladies. And now I'll turn it all over to Miss Charlotte. Thank you. Um, well, with a little help of our friends, because um, there's two amazing family members in the audience. This is our sixth annual cultural celebration that began. Oh, thank you. Are we on? Thank you so much. Six years ago, barnstorming into our life was this rascal named Bobby Bridger. Yes. Bobby Bridger was brought into the museum and all of our lives became a swirl of family. He introduced us to the most extraordinary people, from Wes Studi, to Mr. Daniel Wildcat, to Gail Ross, to Joe Marshall. It goes on and on and on, in six years, this circle just keeps expanding. And it is our honor every day to have, well, open those doors and to welcome all of you into being our museum family. So, you know, thank you, Mr. Bobby Bridger. He'll be here today. Come here, just for a second. He drove all the way from Houston. He's a monster. And also, Bobby will have, um, he'll have a little vignette today at three o'clock, but he's doing, uh, indigenous audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Talk about the new art of making uh, oral history, I guess you would call it. That's, that's the primary reason I got into audiobooks, was I saw them as oral history, and they made a lot of sense for Indians to do audiobooks, and I didn't see many Indians doing audiobooks. And I wanted to see more Indians writing books, and so that's that's kind of what we hooked up with. I said, I know some people who can perhaps help get some young Indian writers in over here. And we were so close to uh, Oklahoma and all the headquarters of most of the tribes are located over in Miami, Oklahoma, in eastern Oklahoma. So I figured if we're so close, we could get some kids over here and maybe stimulate some new writers on the scene that would be writing about contemporary America uh, now as an Indian. And that was really the whole gist of what I proposed to Charlotte the year, six years ago. I said, I can, I can get some of these people in, in touch with the museum and we could hold some conferences and attract some young Indian writers. And then that has gone into audiobooks and so that's what I'm doing primarily with my life now is recording audiobooks with Indian people. Well one of those people is Wes Studi <laughs> and also not only is uh, doing the work of Vine Deloria who is one of your best friends and Dan's mentor 
And so this is a day of authors, it's a day of workshops, it's a day of musicians. And I know we have a talking circle in just a second, so I, you'll see Bobby here in a little bit, but authors will be here to sign their books. I'd need to bring Mr. Daniel Wildcat up really quick because I know we don't have very much time because we want to start this program. The word indigenuity has been coined by Daniel Wildcat, and it is my honor to see this man on the phone with us every two weeks. Okay you know, helping bringing the most extraordinary presenters to Mona. These are some of the most joyful people you are ever going to meet on such a serious topic as climate change. And like Dan said, right now, as we're sitting in this beautiful state of Arkansas with clear skies, mm -hmm. in Alaska, they are in peril right now. In Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. they are in peril right now. And all of us can look at our community, and I hope you'll stick around for Dr. May Hayes' talking circle on what we can do together. We don't have to wait for a big body of government to do this. Find your pod. Mm -hmm. And the blessing was so moving, Dan. I can't thank you enough for being such a good friend of the museum. And all these years with COVID, I finally get to hug him. <laughs> I mean, it's been three years I've never gotten to see this man in person. And speaking of COVID, we do have the Arkansas Health Department here with booster yeah. shots today. Yeah. So we invite you all to come to this amazing three days. There's uh, tomorrow night, there's a short film festival, the Quapa Nation. On Wednesday to close it out, we have the amazing Grammy uh, award winning guitarist Larry Mitchell joined by Michael Bigay, mm. who's Diné and a uh, composer that works with Carnegie Hall and Yo-Yo Ma. Right now he's not here because he's at Arkansas Arts Academy working with the music students to create a creation. And all of this is free. And I just cannot thank my lovely boss. And um, I just also want to say, surprise, it's your birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Today's his birthday. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So with that, you have a couple of more things. Oh, I have to finish real quick. Okay. Indigenuity 2.0, honoring the lessons of the mother. Mm -hmm. This is not an event. This is a movement. Mm -hmm. Could you just say a few words about indigenuity, and then we'll bring in Dr. Mayhay. Well, indigenuity has been around forever. As long as there's been indigenous people on this beautiful mother earth since time immemorial, it's just a word to capture something that I think is really important. And I can't take for credit this, this word. It was in the ether. It must have been in 2004, 2005. Uh, students were taking a class with my colleague, Julia Goodfox. And they were trying to think, how do we capture in the settler's language, English, some of our ancient ideas? And they started talking about the fact that people keep talking about our wisdom and our knowledge past tense. And said, it's not past tense. Okay, you've heard that apocryphal quote attributed to Einstein. You know, you can't fix problems with the same kind of thinking that created them. Can't blame the Cherokee, can't blame the Lakota for the problems we have today. The Seminole, the Choctaw. But we just might have some thinking that could help us address together some of the most pressing problems on the planet. So they had were in a seminar and I had a student, Curtis Kakaba, he wrote me a paper, said, Dr. Wildcat, I think what we've been talking about is indigenous ingenuity. Indigenuity. That's the first time I saw the word. And since then all I've been doing is trying to really uh, explore that, illuminate it, explain it, most importantly, apply it. And we're going to have young scholars today who are using this idea and using that application of ancient knowledge and wisdom to solve contemporary problems. And that's why special thanks to David, to Jaslyn, to Charlotte, because to me, the reason I am so proud of my relationship with Mona is they're not telling the story just of the past. They're telling about the indigenous people who are still here, still alive, singing their songs, saying their prayers, and guess what? Exercising indigenuity. <laughs> and that is something we should all be thankful for. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you. All right. So today, after 
two years of being virtual, of being hybrid. We were live at Mona. Mona has just acquired our new, some land next door, so there's plenty of parking for uh, school buses and, and all of you to come down, so it's all three days. Don't miss it. And also, we're streaming live all over the globe. Last year, we reached over 200,000 people. Let's make that a million. So with that, thank you all for joining us. And uh, we will be recording it when we braid time here with David's brilliant vision of celebrating the artistry and diversity of the first people. For us to bring what we cannot represent 574 federally recognized tribe plus everybody in South America, Mexico, and the Antilles, we can bring these amazing people to share their culture, to share their art, to share their nerdiness, like with Coyote and Crow, who created a indigenous, all designed tabletop role playing game, to uh, Johnny J from a tribe called Geek, surviving the zombie apocalypse, res style. <laughs> so it's joyful, and we hope you'll all join us. Thank you all for joining us for the sixth annual cultural celebration. Oh! Thank you.